Today I'm going to be answering the question, what is the best cooling configuration for the Leon Lee 011 Dynamic Mini? Hello, hopefully you've seen the recent build guide I've put together in Leon Lee's 011 Dynamic Mini. If you haven't, you'll find a link to that in the description. So normally when I do a full step-by-step -step build guide, if I've got a new case like I have here, I will put out a case review. And in that review, as well as pointing out all the features of the case, I'll do quite a detailed thermal testing. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you what is the best way to cool your components in the case, and as well, whether you should get the case. Actually, in the build guide, this case has so many great features, I spent a really long time going through them all. And actually, to do a review of this case, I would really just be repeating myself. So what I would do is encourage you to check out that video, and you'll find a link to it in the description, pointing out all the features in the case, all the different configurations, what hardware you can fit in each of the different layouts. And today, I'm just going to focus on the best thermals. Now, importantly, when others look at thermals, they will just focus on the temperatures. And you could get absolutely brilliant temperatures, but have a PC that's incredibly noisy and incredibly ugly. So whenever I do my thermal testing, I always focus on three things. And they are, importantly, the thermals, but also the acoustics and the aesthetics. So at the end of this video, I'm going to be telling you what is the best thermal configuration that factors in each of those three factors. So I put together a slightly different system using the only micro ATX motherboard that I've currently got that's not already in a PC. So for the CPU, we've gone for the Ryzen 5 5600X, and that is being cooled by the Lian Li Galahad 240mm AIO, which I've got on the side as an exhaust. For the graphics card, we've got the MSI RTX 3060 Gaming X Trio. For both the case fans and the fans on the radiator, I'm using the Lian Li Uni fans. So the three fans at the bottom are set to intake. The two fans on the radiator at the side are set to exhaust. We've got a single rear exhaust, and the three fans at the top of the case are set to exhaust. So I'll give you a quick run through of how I do my thermal testing. So what I do is I let the PC idle for 30 minutes with no programs running in the background and record the lowest CPU and GPU temperatures over that time period. I'll then run a 30-minute IDA64 stability test with all components in the system being stressed and record the maximum CPU and GPU temperature over that time period. As well, both at idle and under load, I will record a noise level um, for one minute and take the average noise level. Now, you may or may not know the new NVIDIA 3000 series cards have a zero fan mode. So actually, the fans don't run for most of the time, and it's actually only when the car gets significantly hot that the fans actually switch on. And this has caused me some problems with my thermal testing. So at idle, the fans will not come on at all on the GPU. The car will start off reasonably cool, and then it will just get hotter and hotter over that 30 minute period. So actually, if you were to leave the fans running in their default fan curve, the idle temperature would actually reflect the time that you've recorded it rather than anything to do with cooling in the case. The other issue I've had with this RTX 3060 card, and it's quite a nice problem to have, is that it is incredibly cool. So whenever I start the IDA64 stability test, what happens is the temperature goes up significantly, the fans kick in, and they then bring the temperature down, and the card then sits at this temperature for the rest of the test. So the problem with this is that actually the highest temperature is during that initial peak. And that is completely unrelated to the thermal configurations in this case. So that's a long way of saying that the only way for me to give you accurate GPU temperatures, both at idle and under load, was to modify the fan curves. And I did this using MSI Afterburner stock fan curves, both at idle and under load. And it's also important to say that all the fans in the system and the AIO itself were all running off the standard motherboard fan curves without any modification. So looking at the results, and I think it's fair to say the temperatures were excellent. So our CPU idled at 37 degrees and reached a maximum of 71 degrees under the IDA64 stability test. So you think those CPU temperatures were good, the GPU temperatures were even better. So our GPU idled at 26 degrees and reached a maximum of 46 degrees under the IDA64 stability test. And yes, you did hear me right, 46 degrees. 
So our idle noise levels were very acceptable for a case with nine case fans at 35 decibels. The noise levels under load were a little bit higher than I would have liked at 54 decibels. So despite the fact that we've got excellent temperatures, I'm sure some of you are already questioning my fan layout in this particular build. And I'm sure it's the fans on the radiator on the side set to exhaust. At the moment, we have got negative pressure in the case, which I don't think is a good thing. And we've got a radiator on the side set to exhaust rather than intake, which is gonna give us worse temperatures. If you bring cool air in from outside the case through the radiator, it's gonna give you better cooling potential than taking hot air from inside the case and putting it through the same radiator. So the reason I did this, and I did cover this in my full step-by-step -step build guide, was this was just a starting point. And I was building what I thought was the best looking PC and laying the fans out in that orientation purely to give us the best looks, fully aware that temperatures were likely to suffer. So how much were they likely to suffer? That's what we were gonna find out now. So the first thing I did was I simply flipped the fans round on the radiator, setting them to intake rather than exhaust. So looking at the results, the only change at idle was the CPU was one degree hotter, while under load, the CPU was three degrees cooler. With the radiator set to an intake, our GPU was also cooler by two degrees. But probably the most noteworthy change here was actually the reduction in noise levels under load by seven decibels, simply by changing the radiator on the side to an intake rather than an exhaust. So while it's a well-known fact that having your AIO as an intake will give you better temperatures, it's less well-known that your PC will actually run quieter. And there's a few reasons for that. Part of it is due to the airflow in the case and actually how much noise it creates. The other bit of it is actually if your PC is running cooler, the fans aren't gonna to have to ramp up as much and then that is gonna bring less noise as well. So from an aesthetic point of view, I think having the fans on the side set to exhaust does look better. But in recent years, this is less of an issue than it used to be. These uni fans from Li An Li actually look quite good because there's lighting on both sides, so it doesn't really matter which way you have them round. Uh, Corsair's QL fans are another example that would look fairly well on the side set to intake. So the aesthetic aspect is less of an issue than it was when I did my original build in the full size Li An Li O11 Dynamic. From a thermals point of view, we're going to get better thermals and we're going to get significantly better noise levels. So with a side mounted radiator, my recommendation would now be to have the fans set to intake. The next thing I want to look at was did the fans below the GPU actually improve temperatures? So I removed the three fans below the GPU, leaving everything else the same. So at idle, our CPU was one degree cooler while our GPU was one degree hotter and there was no difference to the idle noise levels. Under load, there was no difference to our CPU temperatures while our GPU ran two degrees hotter. Although this came at two decibels less noise. So I think just looking at this in terms of thermals and noise, you would probably conclude that there's no benefit because although the fans at the bottom will bring your temperatures down a little bit, they come at the expense of extra noise and those two are probably gonna balance themselves out. Also, when you consider that three fans down the bottom, particularly three uni fans, isn't gonna be the cheapest thing to do, you might conclude that they're not worth it. But that would be if you don't look at the aesthetics. And I think from an aesthetic point of view, the three fans down the bottom look great, and particularly these uni fans look incredible down at the bottom. So I think weighing things up, you're gonna to have to decide aesthetically, are they worth the extra cost? The other thing might be if you have a GPU, which is more difficult to cool than this one that I have, and that's probably every other GPU, because this one runs incredibly cool, you may find more benefit with the fans down the bottom, and I would expect that you would based on my previous testing, and you might find yourself you know, six, seven degrees saved in your GPU temperatures, and in that case, they may well be worth the extra cost. The next thing I want to look at was did having the side radiator in a push-pull configuration improve temperatures over just having one set of fans on the radiator? And actually in the rear compartment behind the radiator, you do have three centimeters of space for an extra set of fans. So because I had already used the uni fans on the radiator, I simply added the original Galahad fans to the other side of the radiator 
and had them both set to intake. So looking at the temperatures at idle, our CPU temperature came down by one degree, while our GPU temperatures went up by one degree, and there was no difference to the noise levels. Under load, again, our CPU temperature came down by one degree, although this was at the expense of a three degree increase in our GPU temperatures. And as well, there was one decibel of extra noise with the push-pull configuration. So these results are very much in keeping with my previous thermal testing using push-pull in other cases. So in general, your CPU temperatures tend to come down by one or two degrees, while your noise levels will go up by one or two decibels, depending on how good the fans are that you're using. The other thing that you have to factor in when you're thinking of push-pull is the cost for an extra set of fans on the other side of the radiator. And that's the reason I normally don't recommend it. You're only getting slight improvement in temperatures, but you're paying a significant cost for it. In this particular build, you're actually ending up with worse temperatures. And even though I had these fans sitting in the box, so there was no extra cost to them, I wouldn't recommend adding them into the build. So for this particular case, for a side radiator, I would recommend just having one set of fans on the radiator set to intake. The next thing I wanted to test was how well did a 360mm AIO perform at the top. So I mounted the Galahad 360mm AIO at the top set to exhaust, leaving the fans at the side set to intake. So looking at the results, the only change at idle was that our CPU temperatures came down by 2 degrees with the 360mm AIO. While it was a completely different story under load, with our CPU temperatures being 2 degrees hotter, GPU temperatures 1 degree hotter, and there have been an additional 6 decibels of extra noise with the 360mm AIO. So I think this again shows the advantages of having your AIO set to an intake in terms of both temperatures and noise levels. And in fact, in this particular case, a 240mm AIO on the side outperformed a 360mm AIO on the top. And importantly, these were both the same brand of AIO. So just before we write the 360mm AIO off, I wanted to try one more thermal configuration. So what I did was I flipped the fans on the radiator at the top round, setting them to intake. I also flipped the fans on the side round, having them set to exhaust, leaving the bottom fans as intake and the rear fan as exhaust. So while this sounds like quite a strange thermal configuration, it actually does have quite a few advantages. You're getting your AIO in its best orientation, which is intake, which should give you better thermals and better noise, as we've seen so far. You're getting to keep the fans on the side as exhaust, where they look their best. And in fact, this was my best thermal configuration when I tested the original PCO11 Dynamic. And if you haven't seen that video, you'll find a link to it in the description. I think at the time of recording this, it's over 130,000 views. So looking at the results, with our radiator at the top set to intake, our CPU idled one degree hotter, while under load it was one degree cooler. GPU temperatures were unchanged at idle, while under load our GPU ran two degrees hotter. As expected, our noise levels were better by one decibel at idle, and four decibels under load. So with the 360mm AIO at the top set to intake, overall the temperatures were worse. Although the noise levels were better than when it was set to exhaust, the 240mm AIO on the side set to intake outperformed the 360mm at the top in every configuration. So as well as giving you better temperatures and noise levels, in this case, a 240mm AIO is actually going to be significantly cheaper to buy than a 360mm AIO, so that's good news. The other area that we haven't looked at yet is the aesthetics. And aesthetically, having the radiator on the side looks significantly better than the radiator on the top. And there's a few reasons for that. So obviously when you just had the fans on the side compared to the radiator and the fans, they covered less of the cutout at the side. So there was more visible above and below the fans and also to the left hand side of the fans and this just did not look as well. The other thing is you could actually see through the fans and see the side panel. So I think if for whatever reason you did want to go with fans on the side I would recommend two 140mm fans rather than two 120mm fans but I think that would look significantly better. The next thing that I wanted to do was test how good the case was for air cooling. And one advantage with this case over the original PC11 Dynamic, even though it's smaller, you can actually fit bigger CPU coolers. So the height for CPU coolers is up to 172 millimeters, 
which should mean that Noctua's NHD 15 at 165 millimeters should fit. So while the heatsink itself fitted without any problem, and I was able to even add the white covers to the heatsink, I wasn't able to mount a fan on front of the heatsink. It was just catching on the RAM. It is important to say that I was using pretty low profile RAM. It was the HyperX Fury RGB, but with this I was not able to get the glass panel on the front on. The middle fan fitted without any problem, and instead I mounted the second fan on the rear of the cooler. With it here, I was just about able to get the glass panel closed, although the fan was resting on the glass panel itself, and there was some vibration noise from it. So with our NHD mounted, there was only one fan configuration that made sense, so that was having our bottom and side fans set to intake, and our rear and top fans set to exhaust. So looking at the CPU temperatures, with the NHD 15, our CPU actually idled a 1 degree cooler, while under load, our CPU was 1 degree hotter. Our GPU temperatures were worse with the NHD 15 by 1 degree at idle and 2 degrees under load. Noise levels were significantly worse with the NHD 15 by 1 decibel at idle and by 5 decibels under load. So compared to using a 240mm AIO in this case, if you want to use a premium air cooler like the NHD 15, you're going to have worse temperatures, you're going to have more noise, you're going to have more difficulty getting it to fit. And I think the other big issue that you're going to have is with the aesthetics. So I did try to make this build look as good as I could with the NHD 15, and I think adding the white covers to the heat sinks did help. But I think when you compare this to our build with just the AIO, there's absolutely no comparison. And I think this looks significantly worse with the air cooler. That may be just be my personal preference, but I think this case is designed for water cooling, either with an AIO or a full custom look. And I think an air cooler looks out of place in my personal opinion. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put a summary slide up of all the thermal configurations I've tested so far. So if you want to have a closer look at them, you can go ahead and pause the video. Okay, so this brings me on to where I need to sum up and tell you how I think you should build in this case. And I think it's fairly clear that having a radiator on the side is gonna give us the best thermals, the best noise levels, and also I think probably the best aesthetics in this case. The one slight change that I would make is that I would probably recommend a 280 millimeter radiator on the side. I haven't tested this personally, but a 280 versus a 240 should give us better temperatures. In general, 140 millimeter fans are gonna be a little bit quieter than 120 millimeter fans, so it hopefully will be even a little bit more quiet as well. And I think from an aesthetic point of view, it's just gonna fill that area of the case much better as well. So it should be a win in every area, apart from being slightly more expensive, but I think that's probably money well spent. I think as well, we've answered the question about whether that radiator should be an intake or an exhaust. While it is gonna look slightly better as an exhaust, there's too many compromises with it. And the fans have moved on so much since I did my original Lian Li PC-11 dynamic thermal testing. And I would now recommend having that as an intake. And using something like the Lian Li Uni fans, I have been incredibly impressed with them in this build. I know they're hard to get at the moment, and they're reasonably expensive, but I think they're worth the money, and I think they look incredibly good. They're also incredibly quiet, and a big advantage to them as well is they work fairly well on radiators as well as case fans, which is quite unusual because some fans are good in radiators, some are good in case fans. These are good in both. I think the other thing that I would recommend is using this case in a seven slot position with a full-sized ATX motherboard. And I think the only reason really to go with a micro ATX motherboard is that you want to mount a radiator at the top. And we've already shown that this isn't a good idea and that the radiator on the side is gonna give you better thermals, better acoustics, and also better aesthetics. And in fact, before I had done this thermal testing, really my only criticism of this case was that it wouldn't let you mount a 360 millimeter radiator at the top with an ATX motherboard. And I couldn't really understand why, because actually if you moved the mounting holes forward, you were actually probably able to get it to fit. And I thought the main reason Lian Li had done it was to set this case apart from the full-sized O11 dynamic. But actually now that I've done the thermal testing, this wouldn't be something that I would want to do, 
So actually, I can't think of any disadvantages to this case. The other reasons that I would recommend going for a full-sized ATX board is that you're actually going to have more choice when it comes to picking your motherboard. Micro ATX motherboards, there's few and far between to choose from, and they don't tend to have that high specs. Also, with a full-sized ATX board, you're going to have more PCIe slots, you're going to have more M.2 slots, so I think it just makes sense on those reasons. The other big advantage it's going to give you is when it comes to the aesthetics. I think a full-size ATX motherboard is just going to fill the case much better, and you're not going to see the wires running up to the bottom and top of the motherboard as well. That was something I noted, not at the bottom, because your GPU sits very low with a micro ATX board, but at the top, you could see all the wires running down to the board when you didn't have a radiator at the top. So I think if you were to do this, it wouldn't look as good as having a full-size ATX motherboard. The other thing that it would do is it would lift your GPU up a little bit and center it better in the case. With a micro ATX motherboard, your GPU is actually sitting quite close to the fans at the bottom. Having a full-size ATX board would lift it up into the center of the case and might actually give you better temperatures as your GPU would be further away from the bottom fans. So hopefully you find this video useful. If you are thinking of getting this case, it's going to help you decide on how to lay out your components. If you want to learn more about the case, um, particularly how to change the back panel, what hardware will go where, and how each of the different motherboard options looks, check out my full step-by-step -step build guide. I've covered all that there, and you'll find a link to that in the description. Remember to hit the like button, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please do that as well. Thanks for watching.